Next question. Mm -hmm. How do I get past the analysing and judging of my emotions and into feeling them? <laughs> analysing and judging your emotions are driven by addiction. So the way to get past analysing and judging your emotions is to start looking at your addictions mm -hmm. to suppressing your emotions. The only reason why the mind wants to analyse an emotion is because you're addicted to, to not feeling the emotion. You don't want to feel it, right? If you wanted to feel it, you wouldn't need to analyse it anymore, right? <laughs> yeah. Secondly, with judgement, the only reason why the mind reverts to judgement of any emotion is because something happened and you want to judge your emotion in order to suppress it. Mm -hmm. It's a tool that we use, in fact, to suppress the emotion. So anger starts rising, you judge the anger, it's a tool to make it go away. Yeah. Right? So it's just a tool to stop you from being humble, mm -hmm. to stop you from acknowledging the truth that the emotion exists and it's there inside of you, no matter how unpleasant you find it, yeah. to, to stop you from wanting to be more loving. Mm -hmm. That's all it's doing. So, so the, way, the fast way to stop analysing and judging your emotions is to look at your addictions as to why you want to judge your emotion and look at your addictions as to why you want to analyse your emotion. Yeah. And then you'll find quite a lot of addictions that you have and you use them all as tools to avoid emotion. Right? That's, that, they're all just ways or methods of suppression, ways or methods of resistance, ways or methods of denial, ways or methods of substitution. Mm -hmm. That's all that they are. So, so the only way to get through judgment and being analytical is to actually look at the reasons why you automatically revert to such behaviour. Yep. And that is an addiction. Remember, every time we're driven to a behaviour that we automatically feel we must take, for example, to analyse something or to judge it, then it's driven by an addiction. We want to analyse it. We want to judge it. So look at why you want to. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do. Mm. Once you look at why you want to analyse and judge, you'll start seeing, oh, I've got that addiction. That's the reason why I want to analyse. I've got that addiction. That's the reason why I want to judge. You know, I want to judge and I want to analyse and that's why I automatically do it. The feeling in my soul is I've got to do that first before I feel anything. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for those things. And the fact that I revert to that behaviour means that there's quite a lot of addiction to those two things yep. occurring. So that's all we need to do. It's quite a simple process but most people think there's far more to it than that. And they want there to be far more to it to that because the whole reason for judging is so that we can suppress our emotions. And the whole reason for analysing is so that we can suppress our emotions and select them. And feel in control of them? Totally. Yeah. We want to select We want to select them. We want to go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah that's a nice emotion. I'll have that one. <laughs> oh, that's, a lovely, that's not a nice emotion. I don't want to have that one. Yeah. That's why we analyse our emotions. Yeah. Like a person who analyzes their emotion wants control you mm. want control you want to be controlled that's why you do it so it's an addiction to control mm -hmm. look at why you're so addicted to control look at why what's going to happen when you get out of control what are you worried about happening when you get out of control what are you worried about happening once you let go of judgment because we hold on to judgment so that we can suppress an emotion it was a major tool used by our parents to suppress our emotion and so we now love it as a tool to suppress our own emotion. We mm -hmm. love using that tool because it's the most effective tool. You know, you, you sit, if you sit in a room, you, if you, you try starting crying and then sit in a room with everyone in the room not wanting you to cry and judging that you're crying and you see how, how long you can cry, right? Now, the only person that can cry a long time in those situations is generally a newborn baby child. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They'll cry and cry and cry and cry <laughs> until they get taken out of the room, right? But the average adult will, will not be able to f even cry one tear in that environment mm -hmm. because of the judgment, mm -hmm. right? And this is why we judge ourselves, so that we don't have to cry one tear, so that we don't have to feel one feeling of fear so that we don't have to feel one feeling of shame. That's why we do it. So we're addicted to it, we need to stop. So whenever you've got judgment or, or any other thing stopping you from feeling an emotion, it's because you want it to stop you from feeling an emotion yeah. and you need to look at your addiction to why you want that so badly. Mm -hmm. It's really quite simple.
And uh, you mentioned about someone sitting in a room where everyone's judging them. Uh, is it true then that we begin to judge ourselves in ways that we felt judged as we were growing up in, a w in an effort to of control course. those things that happened? Well, it, it, if we, we look at it from a, if we psychoanalyze the reasons yeah, why we yeah, would do such yeah, a thing, yeah, yeah. which which obviously is not going to help anybody feel the emotion it's necessarily, yeah, but yeah. but let's see, psychoanalyze yeah, the reason okay. why we might revert to judgment. The main, only reason why we generally revert to judgment is because we used it as a tool to avoid further attack from other people. Mm -hmm. So when our parents, when we got judgment from our parents, we feel, felt quite a lot of pain. So we would rather judge ourselves than receive judgment from others. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a selective tool that we've used for substitution of a more painful emotion. Yeah. That's the only reason why we revert to it. So, so we're brought up to judge in order to suppress more painful emotions. So it's a tool used to suppress causal emotions. And, and as a result, Every time we're placed in a situation where that causal emotion might begin to raise its ugly head as we feel, because mm -hmm. we're already in judgment about the emotion, right? So we're already viewing it as ugly or too painful to mm -hmm. experience. And we're already worried about what our environment is going to say about that emotion. So what we do is we go into judgment about that emotion so that everyone in our environment feels, oh, now she, that's great. You know, she feels the same way or he feels the same way as we do, you know. And this is a great way to avoid the attack of other people. It's a yeah. great way to avoid violence. Yeah. And, and so this is one reason why we've learned it. To, so that we can avoid attack from other people and avoid violence, we learn to attack ourselves instead. Yeah. And, when they, and when a person, I don't know if you've noticed, many parents, when their child attacks themselves, the parent is far more lenient on their behaviour. Yeah. And the parent is also approving generally of the self-attack of the child yeah because uh, it means the parent doesn't have to attack them yeah. anymore and so most parents feel very much drawn into that kind of treatment of children and this is one reason why judgment is self-judgment is such a big problem because we we learnt that things go better for us as a child they do go better for us yeah. when we self-punish they do go better for us because other people stop punishing us yeah you know, we no longer feel violence from other people when we punish ourselves instead, right? So, so that's why we revert to that behaviour. But uh, it's not really good for us, is it? No, it's definitely not good for us, but we're addicted to it. Yes. It's an addiction. Yep. It's an addiction because it prevents us from feeling the real feeling, which is that somebody else was attacking us and it feels really, really bad. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels really sad and it feels terrible that we're being attacked and we're quite afraid when we're attacked. And we don't want to feel the fear-based emotions or the grieving-based emotions associated with the attack. Anybody who attacks us doesn't love us. We don't want to feel that. And so, so we revert to the self-punishment instead. We can avoid all whole groups of emotions when we revert to self-punishment. So psycho, psychologically, that's why we do it. But me saying that to a person who does it is not really going to help them through it unless they go into their addiction to doing it. Yeah. They need to feel the reason why they're so addicted to doing it. Why do they want to do it? And why do they not want to change mm -hmm. that addiction? Mm -hmm. You know, because it helps them avoid deeper pain. Yeah. Self-punishment or self-judgment helps you avoid the deeper pain of other people punishing you or other people judging you. But as you just said, you just told us and we can receive that information intellectually, but it doesn't help us shift that addiction until we're willing to to actually connect feel to that emotion, the addiction yeah. and feel the fear that drives it. Yeah. Right? So the real fear that drives it is I'm terrified to be myself and I'm terrified to not judge myself anymore because that means more people around me will mm -hmm. and I'm terrified to feel all of those emotions because they feel terrible. Mm -hmm. That's the real reason. But again, we need to feel our way through the addiction first. Our desire to hold on to the judgment rather than letting it go. Mm -hmm. now, it took me years to let go of self-judgment and I still have problems with it in certain aspects. Because, because and it's very, very hard to let go of self-judgment yeah. or self-punishment when Others you've got judging. thousands or tens of thousands or millions of people attacking you constantly because yeah. you then start accepting their belief about you. And to prevent their belief from being felt, what you do 
is you construct your own belief about you. Right? And it's much less painful than feeling their belief about you. So we've got to go through that. We've got to let ourselves feel about that, the addiction that we have to punishment and judgment, self-punishment, self-judgment in particular. Of course, some people are addicted to punishment and judgment of others. Yes. Right? And that is, a, that is even a, it's a quite a wicked thing to become addicted to that. But again, it's all avoidance of certain emotions within yourself is the reason why you do it. And, and again, you'd have to focus on your addictions, mm -hmm. not on any other thing or any other fear. Mm -hmm. You need to focus on your addiction first. Feel the addiction. Feel how wrong it is from God's perspective. Feel the truth from God's perspective about that addiction. Would God want you to have it? Would you get into the second sphere even with it? Yeah. Would you ever be able to progress towards God with that addiction? Mm. And if we're honest with ourselves, we can easily tell what addictions we have that we're not going to get anywhere with, with God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I feel that's what we need to do with regard to punishment and judgment or self-punishment and self-judgment. And analysis, self-analysis. Yeah, right. and self-analysis is just another tool that, we, that our mind kicks into gear to, to, as an addiction to avoid certain emotions. You know, most people, what they're doing, and again, we can psychoanalyze that if we want. Yeah. We can go, well, most people are avoiding that they don't know. Yeah. They're avoiding the feeling of not knowing. Yeah. And when they were a child and they didn't know, generally they got laughed at, ridiculed, humiliated or punished. That's what happened. You know, if you think of most children's school years, they got laughed at, ridiculed, humiliated or punished for not knowing something. Mm -hmm. When they were home and they didn't know something, they got laughed at, ridiculed, punished, humiliated as well yeah. so they have learned that it's a terrible thing to not know and so now they use their intellect to know everything <laughs> because it's a terrible thing to not know because there's all these covered over emotions that need to be felt about not knowing mm -hmm. and this is the main reason why we revert to our mind wanting to know all the time right our mind's not capable of knowing a lot of things and most things in fact above the sixth dimension of the spirit world it's just not capable of even knowing them yeah it, need, it needs our soul to be engaged to know all those things. But, but that's not how we're taught on earth. We're taught to not engage our soul, disconnect from our soul, and to know things intellectually, and to do things intellectually, whether we agree with them or not. And we were forced into that process generally, either by society or our own parents. And so naturally, we're going to have a lot of resistance to, to feeling something that we don't know. Yeah. Uh, and that's the main reason why we want to know and analyse everything. So there's another psychologic, psych, psychoanalytical reason as to why we do it, but in the end it's not going to help you. <laughs> <laughs> what will help you instead is understanding the feeling of the addiction. Yep. You need to feel the addiction you have to revert back to the mind every time. Every time you revert back to the mind, you're avoiding an emotion. Why are you doing that? What do you get out of doing that? There is something you get out. You then know, you feel safer, you feel more in control, you feel more secure. These are the emotions you're avoiding through this addiction. Mm -hmm. Feel the addiction. Feel whether it's in harmony with God's love or truth or not, and you'll get somewhere. You won't get anywhere if you just go, oh, no, I'm going to revert to analysis again. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get anywhere because that's the go-to point for the addiction. That's what the addiction is driving you to do. Mm -hmm. And unless you're willing to feel the addiction and stop the addiction, it's just like, it's like, it's like a cigarette smoker Unless they, if they always go and take the cigarette every single time and they carry a packet around in their pocket, of course they're not going to give up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. And it's the same with all of our emotional addictions. We're not going to give up these emotional addictions while we carry them around in our pocket all the time for use every single situation where they're triggered. Yeah. We're not going to give it up. We're going to have to learn to confront our addictions just like a smoker is going to have to probably you know, throw away his cigarettes and not carry them around in his pocket and not carry a lighter with him in his pocket and all those things that support him in his addiction. Then he's got a chance of giving up. Yeah. And, it, and if he goes through the emotions, of course, he's got a great chance <laughs> of giving up. But, but this is the thing. We can't give up any addiction while we just continue living in it. All we're doing is continue to supporting it and agree with it and we continue to, to actually justify its existence. Yeah. And, and God's going to say, well, you just want it anyway. I'm not going to take it away while you want it. You can have it. <laughs> it's not helping you, but you can have it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this is what we need to do with all these kind of addictions like judgment, punishment in, and, and analysis and so forth and so forth. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. <laughs>